Chris do with Sensible Nutrition. So this time of year, there is nothing better than coming home to the aroma of a hearty meal coming from your slow cooker. But the last thing that you want is to get a foodborne illness from your slow cooked meal. So today I'm gonna to give you a couple of food safety tips when using your slow cooker. So first of all, before you even begin, you wanna make sure that your slow cooker, any utensils that you're going to be using, and the area that you're going to be prepping your food has been properly cleaned and sanitized. And of course, you wanna make sure that you've properly washed your hands before starting. So when you're ready to start preparing your meal, you wanna leave your perishable foods in the refrigerator until you're ready to place them into the slow cooker. It can take your slow cooker several hours to reach a safe bacteria killing temperature. So leaving your perishable foods in the refrigerator assures that bacteria which rapidly multiply at room temperature won't get a head start during the first few hours of cooking. You want to always properly thaw meat or poultry before placing it into your slow cooker. If you have a large cut of meat, you want to cut it into a couple smaller pieces of meat and place it in your slow cooker, or use pieces of poultry, say then rather like a whole chicken in your slow cooker. Preheat your cooker and add hot liquids to shorten the time that foods are in what we call the temperature danger zone for bacteria. And that danger zone is 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Bacteria tend to multiply rapidly in food when it gets into that danger zone. So we wanna keep food out of that zone as much as possible. To assure safe and even heat distribution, you want to fill your slow cooker at least half full, but no more than about two thirds full. You want to choose recipes that use liquid. And if you're cooking meat or poultry, that liquid needs to just about cover or be over the top um, of your meat and poultry. That creates steam and it ensures effective heat transfer all throughout your slow cooker. If possible, cook your meal on high for the first hour and then reduce it to low for the remaining cooking process. This just reduces the time that your food may be in that temperature danger zone. We don't want to remove the lid unnecessarily during the cooking process. The temperature drops 10 to 15 degrees in your slow cooker each time you take the lid off, which slows the overall cooking process. If you do need to take the lid off to stir or add ingredients and stir, just make sure that you are properly washing and sanitizing your utensils in between uses. Always use a food thermometer to check your food in your slow cooker before you eat it. If you are checking the temperature of meat or poultry, you wanna take your food thermometer and you wanna place the end of it right down in the thickest, meatiest part. Make sure that the tip is not up against the bone that won't give you an accurate uh, temperature reading. So um, I have turkey chili in here and this has been in here for several hours and it's super hot. I'm sure it is above and beyond a safe temperature, but I always use my food thermometer and check just to be on the safe side. So soups and stews, casserole sauces, they need to reach a safe internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick my food thermometer and right down in here and the tip of it just should be right down in the center of my chili. And I wanna make sure that my chili is at at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So we are at about 140 right now and it's still going up. We are at 160. So I just need to make sure that it gets to at least 165. And right now we're at 165 and it is still going up. So it's at 170 now. So I know that my chili is at a safe temperature to eat. If you would like more information on what the safe temperature is for different types of foods, you can go to foodsafety.gov. So once you have served your crock pot meal, you don't wanna leave the leftover food in the crock pot or the slow cooker to cool down. Rather, place those leftovers into shallow containers and put them in the fridge. You also don't want to reheat leftovers in your slow cooker. Rather, use the stovetop or the microwave to reheat those and make sure those leftovers reach a temperature of at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Once they've reached that safe temperature, then you can place those heated up foods into your slow cooker to keep them warm. Just make sure that your slow cooker is keeping those foods at at least 140 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer. 
If you aren't sure if your slow cooker is cooking your food hot enough, you can test it by placing two quarts of water in it, place the lid on it, turn it on low for eight hours. After eight hours, remove the lid, use your food thermometer, and immediately check the temperature of the water. That water should be at least 185 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So I hope this helps. If you haven't gotten your slow cooker out yet, now is a great time. So stay safe and enjoy.